Well, the Tuesday, October 17th, uh, 2017 meeting of the Wilma Public Library District Board of Trustees, please come to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Sure. <laughs> Trustee Rogers. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. Trustee Barshus. Here. I, I note that we do have a quorum as of this point. Um, the first item um, is public comment. I, I think all of you are here for particular items. Is no one's here to just speak generally? Okay, fine. Then the first, um, then the next item on our agenda is uh, Mr. Kale. Um, he uh, would like to address us with respect to the action that the board took last month, uh, where a patron ban was entered for three months. Other. Uh, two months remaining on that bat. Mr. Kale, would you please, if you could sit there next to the, yeah, on that chair, and I, I should say that um, we're asking you if you could limit your remarks to about three minutes or so, we would very much appreciate that. Okay, thank you. By way of introduction, my name is Oye Mola, but the short form is Oye, and the last name is Kale. I don't remember the exact date, but uh, I'm sure I'm here because of the incident of what happened on that day. I, very often when people hear my accent, some people get turned off for certain reasons, and I can come to that remark later on. But just by way of introduction, I got into, I came to United States January 1968 to go to the University of Illinois in Urbana Champaign, so by January it will be 50 years since I got here. But most of the time since 1973, I've lived, lived most of my life on the south side of Chicago, and that's where I worked. I came to Ildi, we will met about 19 years ago, but I still work in the south side. In actual fact, I was just coming from 75th and Jeffrey right now. What happened that day was, I was in the computer room with so many other people. And there was a young man that came out, uh, stood up, must be at least over six feet tall, and his pants were hanging down. And from that, you could see two thirds of the underwear. So I walked up over to him as he was leaving the place, and I said, I don't think this is the sort of thing we'd like to see here, because some people get offended by that. I'm also because for 31 years, I was a professor with City Colleges of Chicago. And some of my female students had walked out of class because there were some men there whose pants were, underwears were showing. So I, I think it would be offensive. And that was what I said to the gentleman. And the gentleman said, well, who, why do you think I need your advice? I said, well, I think I need, you need my advice because it is offensive for people to see your underwears. I said, what? Well, you go mind your own business. And if you don't, I'll take care of you at the parking lot. I said, what does that mean? Well, that means I beat up, quote unquote. And I said, really, why, where, why does this discussion lead there? Because you should mind your own business. And by the way, I got news for you. If you don't mind your business, I'll also have a gun and I'll blow up your head. And I was, oh, wow, well, what are you talking about? I said, you really mean what I said? Yeah, I mean what I said. Because I have a gun. I said, well, if you really have a gun, then I'm going to have to call the police because you are threatening me with a gun. So I said, OK, you can do whatever F you want to do. So I picked up my cell phone and I dialed 911. And I said to the police, well, somebody here had just threatened me with a gun. So I don't know, one thing led to the other. And the police said, well, hold on to the phone until we get there, because there are some people who come in, in and come out of the build, building. So I'm not sure what the report the board got. That's why my question and my statement I said, well, I'm not sure what you got by way of report, whether it was what happened in the computer room or what happened when the police came in, because I kept talking on the telephone as I was walking out, and the police said, well, meet us outside. So in a nutshell, that was what happened that day. And there are a few other things I could say. I know you want me to limit myself to three, three minutes, but there are other things I could say that 
in all the, since 1973 that I've lived in Chicago, I've had to work with a lot of people because I come from a society where, when I was growing up, very, people, very few people have education. And uh, I must even say that the Wilmette Public Library had made quite a bit of contribution to the South Side, 75th and Jeffrey, because my wife has a program, they have a thing here that deals with drug addicts. She's a social worker by nature, and she had worked with Catholic charities. And Wilmette Library had made certain contributions, given us some chairs that were no longer needed. Every Wednesday night, uh, I think I, the gentleman is there, every Wednesday night, I come here to pick up some books that I take over there. And I'm saying all this to simply say that there are certain things that I just believe as a Wilmette citizen, I'm not really going to be comfortable seeing. One more thing, and I'm not saying this to scare anybody, but in all my experiences, I've been told by some of the people we deal with at 75th and Jeffrey to say, well, you know, these different pants hanging around have different significances. Uh, you have to wear your pants in a certain way so that they know that you belong to one group or you don't belong to another group. I have a nephew that came out one day that was badly beaten just because he doesn't belong in that neighborhood. So that's the sort of thing that was going through my mind. And I was talking to this gentleman to simply say, I don't think this is the sort of thing we're going to allow here. So in a nutshell, that's what happened. And please feel free to, to ask questions. Um, um, thank you very much, Mr. Kale, for coming. Um, I, I think we all appreciate that you did not intend for a situation to develop, nonetheless, that escalated rather dramatically. The, and we very much want to have you as a patron. Um, it was a three-month ban. One month has already elapsed. There's two more months to go. And at this point, I uh, ask the board if there's any inclination to sit, change that. There are other libraries. Um, and I'm sorry that this situation occurred, but it did escalate fairly dramatically, uh, fairly quickly. So is there any other board members who wishes to speak? Do we need to make a decision right now? We don't need to take any action. There's a ban that's been in effect mm -hmm. in, at this point. Well, I do appreciate that he came in to, to speak, and I, and I, even though I didn't hear the beginning of it, I think what, what, you see, what you've said seemed very eloquent and, and seemed to explain the situation. And I have read the reports from the past, the previous board meeting, and, and certainly understand that this was not something that seemed to be of any intent by you to create, a, create an incident. Um, so in that sense, I, I, at least for me, it's worth considering the fact that he took the time to come here to, to um, to express his, his, his case and his situation, um, that to me shows us a level of, of, uh, of responsibility and, and uh, interest to, to uh, not have this happen again. But there was a disruption. I guess the thing that sort of troubles me is that there, would, uh, there was a disruption of the patrons and that you spoke to the gentleman about something that really, even though it bothered you, and I know it's hard to hold your tongue, he wasn't doing anything wrong until you made that comment to him about his apparel. And that sort of was out of place. But May I make a comment on that? Mm -hmm. He has been a patron here of so and so on. But I, again, as I said, as a citizen of Wilmette, the board could decide on still banning me for the rest of the two or three months, maybe even longer than that. But I'm going to make a personal appeal as a, as a as a citizen of Wilmette. I think there are certain things we should or may not allow. So I don't think the ladies that are on the desk giving out books or receiving books back. This is my personal view. I don't think they'll appreciate seeing anybody's underwears. And that's where I stand as a Wilmette citizen. I've raised three children in Wilmette. All three of them went to Nutria. And that's one thing I told my two boys. I have two boys and one girl. They are just certain things you don't do. And one of them is nobody wants to see your underwear. I am not too concerned about being banned from the library. I wish I'd rather not be banned. 
Okay, at 73 years, I just enjoy coming to the library. I've been a former professor. I still love to come to the library to read. But whatever the decision is, I'm sorry if there was any disruption, and I'm sorry if that's how it's taken. But if somebody were to say, I blow up your brains, I don't know how else I can handle it except to say, I dial 911. Secondly, whatever we do, The library will not allow somebody to come into the building screaming. The library will not allow certain things. Please consider one thing. One of the things you may want to consider, maybe not consider, is at least let's have some kind of dress code where we come in here. We don't want to introduce some of the other things that are going somewhere else here. That's all my appeal. Banning me is of concern to me, but it's of lesser concern to me than having to see somebody else's underwear. Especially, again, to me, it's a sort of disrespect for the, for the female, for the women in the, in the building. Again, the banning, fine with me. But please do not allow us to come into the building any way we want to. That's all my appeal. Maybe it was not handled right, but if somebody says they're going to blow up my brains with a gun, what was I supposed to say? Okay, please don't break up my mind. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I dial 911. If that's the report you got, I don't know what report you got. I have, I have not seen a copy of the report you got. But Mr. Kale, I, I do appreciate your coming here, and we do want you as a patron. And I keep coming to the fact that this situation escalated fairly dramatically, very quickly, and it need not have happened. If there's you know, looking to my fellow board members, are we, you, two more, two more months. It's been one month since uh, the ban was entered. Um, is there any inclination? Uh, Stuart, you have spoken that you would uh, consider changing the ban. Shorting it right, but I, yeah. But hearing no other. Things. Shortening it how? But Shortening it how much? Like time served, essentially? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because I, I also know that you expressed the interest to try to come to the last board meeting and just wasn't aware of it, weren't aware of it before the meeting happened. Um, I, but again, I, I wasn't there the day of the event, and, and I only know what I've read, um, and I've heard what you've had to say. That's, that's, where, that's where my perspective is coming from. And right. Well, and to reiterate, I mean, it's all in the incident yes, reports. Yeah. This incident got very aggressive and very threatening from both parties. I did, I did not threaten anybody. It got very loud and lots of yelling and angers, uh, uh, tempers flared uh, on both sides and both patrons were banned accordingly because of that, because it was an altercation that was disruptive to other patrons as well as creating a hostile environment surrounding them. So that was why both patrons were banned. Uh, we did talk with the police department uh, who also recommended that both of the people involved were culpable. Right. So, she said culpable. So we're sorry this happened. Um, and we, as I said, I keep saying we want you back as a patron, but a period of time and reflection um, seems appropriate in this situation. Um, we have banned patrons for much longer than three months, I yeah. will tell you. So I consider uh, this a cooling off good. period. A cooling off period. A cooling off period. And we hope to see you back in uh, two, months. two months. Two months. So it's okay, November. May, may I request for a copy of the report you have? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. A copy you of the report. You would like a copy of the report. Um, yes, all, we absolutely. Can, we can mail you the incident report. Mm -hmm. and? Yes. We get, we'll mail uh, the entire report to you along with the record, which is already it's part of the minutes from the last month, uh, we'll a complete incident report. Right. The police may have an ins further incident report as well. But they so. don't have theirs. So thank you. Thank you, sir. May and I thank ask you one for more question, though. And that is, could you please consider my suggestion that we should have a dress code to come into the library? That's that's a that's a request, a suggestion. You don't have to go with it, but 
I don't think we should be look, looking at people's on their ways. I, I just don't think so. It's something to consider. We've Definitely. never had that problem up to this point. So it's, we've never had that problem up to this point that I know of. And so this is something brand new for us to have to consider also. So we appreciate that point. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Um, moving on to the um, additional presentation, uh, some presentations. On the agenda, as stated, we have first the insurance and second the audit, but we've had, um, after reviewing, it may be more efficient for everyone's time if we do the audit presentation first. So, um, do I have to have a motion to amend the agenda? I'll motion no. so to amend the agenda. Okay. Don't so we'll hear first the on the audit and um, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm Dan Berg. I'm the partner from Sickich that's in charge of the audit. Um, and I'm happy to report the audit 